Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. And this time we're talking the winner of our viewer's choice contest from the other week. And that was the show Gravity Falls. So I'm here to talk about the first two episodes of that show. I uh, just finished watching it and all in all, I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. The show is uh, quite a bit of fun. There's a lot of good humor in it. And it didn't really dawn on me until after I'd finished uh, watching the first episode and... Um, you know, went off to take care of a few chores around the house uh, before I watched the second. Well, while I was doing it, I was thinking, like, man, this show really reminds me of of something else, but I can't think of what. And while I was going uh, about my chores, it kind of dawned on me, this show is in, in a lot of ways somewhat reminiscent of the program called Erie, Indiana, which uh, aired on NBC back in the 90s. And I, I liked it quite a bit when I was a kid. And... <clears throat> Both Erie and Gravity Falls involve these uh, kids, a kid uh, in here in Gravity Falls, it's a brother and sister called uh, Dipper and Mabel Pine who go to this town, uh, Gravity Falls in Oregon, which is um, just all full of all kinds of weird things. And the show Erie, Indiana was about a kid named Marshall Teller who moved to the town of Erie, Indiana. And in, he, he kind of quickly discovers that this seems to be like the center of weirdness for the entire world. He sort of, in the opening narration, would kind of point out that Elvis lives on my paper route and Bigfoot eats out of my trash. And uh, he teamed up with a local kid to just go out there and investigate uh, all these things that were going on in this town. And the, shoot, the two shows also kind of have it where a lot of the mysteries of what's going on start out seeming like one thing, and then by the time you get to the end of the story, there's been a big twist, and what you thought was going on really isn't what was going on at all. So, the, you know, they are, they are two, you know, they're very, they're two shows that are in a very similar vein. And, you know, as I said, Erie, Indiana was a favorite of mine, so I think that's probably a lot of the reason why the show went over really well with me. I also have to give the show uh, credit because, uh, honestly, it's just genuinely a funny show. The, you know, some of the jokes, I mean, I did literally laugh out loud a couple of times. They throw out some really nice one-liners. And uh, the show is also very genre-aware. I mean, uh, you know, the characters kind of understand just... Dipper in, his, Dipper in particular is a very savvy uh, kid who you know, really knows how to think ahead and deal with these sort of situations in uh, in a really smart way. And I and I always like uh, you know characters who are um, very genre savvy. That's for me. That's always quite a bit of fun. Uh, now the other major character on the show is uh, their great uncle Stan, who who it is that they stay with, and they call him Grunkle Stan, which uh, which is pretty amusing. And he's initially painted as just sort of you know everybody's favorite, somewhat um, questionable uncle, but the um, in the first two episodes we kind of get some hints that plot wise there's more to this guy that's uh, going on then seems, then meets the eye. And then episode two kind of focuses in a little bit more about what's going on with Stan emotionally. And you, he kind of really points out that he's really actually a pretty lonely guy who doesn't really have any friends. And even though he acts like a jerk a lot of the time, he kind of really does appreciate having uh, his two great, his great niece and great nephew around because, you know, he, he's a kind of a lonely person. Uh I also kind of have to say that, um, like, the character of Mabel, you know, she's initially presented as just kind of being sort of overly energetic bubblehead, you know, not unlike, say, Dee Dee from Dexter's Laboratory. But as we kind of go to see a little bit more, where you, you pick up that she's actually quite a bit smarter and more savvy than she lets on. I mean, uh, she's definitely a bit of a space cadet, but, uh, you know, she's not exactly an idiot. And... You know, Dipper himself is, I, I think, uh, the character I like best so far. Is that, you know, he's a very, for somebody his age, he's very, he's pretty observant. He's, as I said, very savvy about how things go. And, you know, he's a planner. And, you know, this is something that I can really relate to because it seems like I always tend to make <laughs> plans with uh, people who are not unlike Mabel, very spontaneous people. And me, if I'm going to go like do something, usually it's like, okay, well, you know, how am I going to get there and all this other stuff? And like, you know, are we going to, what time do we need to be there in order to do all these things? Well, it seems like all of my friends are with people like, hey, let's go there and do that. And, you know, they just do it. They don't really think things out. 
And when we get there, of course, because of this, we inevitably run into problems, which, you know, me being that planning sort of person, this drives me up the wall. So I'm just standing there saying, like, you know, if we just stopped and planned ahead a little bit, a, a bit we would not ha be dealing with this problem now. And, and again, this drives me crazy. But, uh, you know, that's just me being a little uptight. So, uh, as I said, this show, I do like that, one, the stories are interesting. You know, there's there's a lot of, there's so, ugh, can't talk. The two episodes I've seen so far, they've both come with an interesting plot twist that I really did not see coming. Um, as I said, really funny, lots of good one-liners, lots of, um, you know, genre savviness. And... You know, it sort of looks like they're starting to build like kind of an overarching story in the background. I mean, again, it's only two episodes in, so it's a little hard to tell, you know, what what's going on. You know, is why why are things like this? But you know, it's enough to kind of kind of make me feel intrigued. So, and, and I don't want to go into a huge analysis of the characters and stuff like I normally do on shows, just because I don't really feel like two episodes uh, are enough to really give me enough of a read on these characters. Uh, but what I can really say, though, so far is this. That, one, I was pleasantly surprised by just how good this show is. It's pretty fun. It's smartly written. The voice acting is nice. There's definitely, as I said, some plenty of really funny jokes. And... Yeah, I mean, it's it really is just a fun show. So, am I going to watch any more of this show? Yeah, I think so, but uh, this is probably just going to be one of those shows where, you know, you end up with a day where it's crappy outside, nothing particularly pressing is going on, so it's like, you know what, binge TV time. And if I, you know, spot an episode that's floating around on TV while just channel surfing around, yeah, I'll probably sit down and watch it. So, all in all... Just based on the first two episodes, I definitely say give Gravity Falls a try. It's definitely um, a good show, very solidly written, and it looks like it might be. Um, there's, like I said, there might be more to it than uh, like an overall mythology. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. It's not. I, I have a feeling this is probably not going to be just a kind of mystery of the week Scooby-Doo kind of thing, which is good. I like that Western animation is willing to sort of break ranks a little bit and go out in a somewhat more dramatic direction. But again, you know, that's just me spitballing based on two episodes. But anyway, guys, that's all I have for you this time around. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.